So, I don't even remember what I was researching a few days back, but I stumbled upon this little chart with two columns. One was labeled pride, and the other one was labeled self-esteem. And I started looking at the points on each side, duality, different, you know, in the opposite, and realized that not only was I in the category I would have least preferred on almost all of them, but that very easily pride could have been crossed out and in its place put ego. And self-esteem crossed out and in its place put higher self. So I'm looking at the chart and I'm thinking, oh man, all this work and I'm still so freaking ruled by my ego? Now we don't want to kill our egos, we need them. They do help us with reality checks and that kind of thing. But I was just a little frustrated because by this point I was hoping I was connecting more with my higher self. I'm going to share that chart with you and I will read it as it is written with the pride and the self-esteem, but just kind of keep in the back of your mind how it could be ego and higher self. All right, I got to look over here. Okay, so the first one under pride is external security. And for self-esteem, internal security. So feeling secure in life only by, you know, amassing huge amounts of money or living in a mansion, being the president of the United States, having lots of people around you that support you and nurture you. You would see that as feeling secure, but actually it's all external. Because if all those things just suddenly disappeared, there you would be going, oh my God, I don't feel secure anymore. Whereas I suppose internal security, and I have to say I suppose, would be even if you had no money and you lived in kind of a dumpy place and you were, I don't know, I don't want to be derogatory to anything that we do in life. It's all important. But you had a job that you didn't consider had all that much status. And you had no one around you to support you and nurture you. If you were internally secure, you would still feel safe because you would know you were just part of all that is, your divinity. And you would know the universe would always have your back and that no matter what circumstances came your way, you could handle them because the divine would see you through and look after you. The next one, scarcity mentality. You know what that is. Oh, I don't have enough of, or I don't have that, or I'd be happy if only I had this, 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 and this. It's never thinking that what we have is adequate. We always feel like we're missing out on something. And then under self-esteem, abundance mentality. So that's not just about money and possessions. That's about, oh, I really love that I have a yard of my own with a fence around it this time around. How abundant am I? Or. I am so grateful to be able to work at my art. Or for me, I am so grateful that I can sing karaoke at three in the morning and no one will hear me. <laughs> so, you know, that's just a matter of looking around to find more blessings and realizing that abundance is in so many categories and you may be very blessed in those categories. You just didn't look at it in that way. Comparison to others under pride. Yeah, 
well, that's got to be ego, you know, because on the other side is no need to compare. It's just security about who you are, knowing who you are and knowing that you're unique and there is no one that can compare to you and that's not with arrogance that's just recognizing how unique we all are like those snowflakes next finding value in possessions or positions under pride and then value in self under self-esteem that's a very hard one you know many of us have grown up thinking that money was the God to bow down to and that it made us something to admire in life you know it's the way we were raised and we probably also were told that we had to achieve a certain status to you know really count and then that other side is value in self where you realize no I'm not listening to their propaganda I'm happy being a pig farmer and I know that there's value in what I offer to the world and who I am. Next, tears others down under pride and lifts others up under self-esteem. That one I don't need to explain except to say that for some weird reason it helps people feel better to knock others down. It allows them to elevate themselves, I guess. I don't get it, but it is. And the last one, I love this one. Under pride, concerned with who is right. Oh, let me say that again with the emphasis in the right place. Concerned with who is right. Always having to win an argument, never wanting to say, oh no, you may have a point. Now, under self-esteem, concerned with what is right. I love that. You don't care if you're right. You care about the principle or you care about learning to communicate in a way free of conflict. That is what is right. So I just, I love that one. So I did do okay on a couple of these, but most of them I was in the pride category. So with those X's out, I was strongly in the ego category and wishing I had been more in the not self-esteem but higher self category. Oh, I have an itch. Excuse me. Ah. I'm beginning to think that is telling me something because when I get on these videos, is the only time my nose starts itching right there just instantly so I'm wondering if that's like a physical tell that spirits giving me like when I say something really important or really valid now I don't remember what I said but I'll go back when I watch it and edit it so that's what was in the chart that's what made me think hold this freaking work and I'm still not connecting to my higher self in any way better than this I'm still so much ego and so I went in search of how we know if we are connecting to our higher self. Because, you know, I've done the video about higher self, show me my yes. I, I know I have connected that way. And there have even been a couple times lately that I think I have spoken with my higher self. But, you know, I'm not at the point yet where I'm willing to say that wasn't maybe wishful thinking or my imagination. And so first... I am going to share the definition of ego, which you probably know, but we'll just do it in the official way. A person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Sense of self-esteem or self-importance. So ego is not just thinking you are the bomb. That's probably not even said anymore but also thinking you are the person that deserves to step on the bomb and just blow the hell up because you're worthless. Those are both ego because they have to do with self-esteem and self-importance. 
All right, but in psychoanalysis, the ego is the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious and is responsible for reality testing and a sense of personal identity. Now, interesting, because the personal identity could very well not even be the real identity because the ego would be the one that says, no man, you gotta act like this around that dude, you know? So now let's go to the official definition of higher self. You guys, I can't possibly remember all this. I'm sorry I'm looking over and reading, but I can't remember all this. Higher self is a term associated with multiple belief systems but its basic premise describes an eternal, omnipotent, conscious, and intelligent being, which is one's real self. The authentic you. That's your higher self. So what we're going to do, now that we've identified each of these sides of the coin, I guess you could say, is go through 11 signs that you may actually be connecting with your higher self even though if you listen to those categories we just covered you're thinking eh, no guess not you may be surprised so the first one is you see 1111 or repeating numbers often on the clock Because our higher self operates on a different frequency, it has to send us messages through various modes until we catch on. Repeating numbers are one of those things. Now, I personally will look up numbers if I notice them repeating often enough as angel numbers. But there could be other ways you could do it, I suppose. This says that repeating numbers carry a lot of energy and actually don't occur very often. Now that's interesting. So if you're seeing them a lot, it's something. Seeing repeating numbers, especially 1111, means you have learned to get more in tune with your authentic self and it wants you to feel assured and confident in your path. How about that? I'll bet you've been seeing repeating numbers. So you are connecting with your higher self in that way. If you bother to look them up, I guess, you get the message. If not, you can just say, oh, I'm communicating with my higher self, but I'm not going to go further and investigate this. Don't do that, okay? The second one is you are feeling drawn to meditate. Meditation lifts the curtain between this world and others allowing you to see things more clearly, including yourself, and so you can connect with your higher self in that way if you come out with in, you know, insights that are making you see more of your authenticity. You start weeding people out of your life who don't seem to be on the same path or track or wavelength or vibration however you want to describe it all of a sudden you realize you have people in your life that are not serving you they're bringing you down they're playing you criticizing you using you whatever it is it could just be that you realize you can't have a decent conversation with them you know you might be excited about something and you're sitting across from your friend and they're like huh you know, it could be things like that. It doesn't have to be those spiritual things like vibration. It says if people start to fall out of your life, don't feel guilty or sad. It just means that you have increased your vibration and must leave those or that which drags you down. So it's not that you switch deodorants and you're suddenly driving everyone away. If you're not removing them of your own volition, spirit will. That's just how it works. Oh, I just got the itch again. Now I gotta start paying attention to that. I think it's a tell. Nice. Okay, you no longer feel limited or threatened by the world around you because you realize your true strength and 
so you don't feel so much fear about the world. Because connecting to your higher self means you are realizing your potential. And you're just kind of dropping those limiting beliefs that used to make you feel small and insignificant. So if you're starting to understand you have power and you're strong, you are connecting with your higher self already. You start to feel good about life again. Well, yeah, I get this one. It says that once you connect to your higher self, you'll find yourself becoming more creative and maybe focused on a particular goal instead of like me all over the place. You'll become more open-minded and you will start to consider things you never would have considered that could be beliefs that are entirely different from sorry jeez now that I'm paying attention I'm not going to pick my nose on screen no but that is so weird now I realize that's awesome thanks guys okay <laughs> so it could be <laughs> your beliefs are totally doing a 18360 I guess 360 wouldn't be good that would just get you right back where you started right doing a 180 it could be that things you never considered you could do. You suddenly are thinking, oh, maybe I should look into that. Maybe I could do that. The next one is that you have more intense and vivid dreams. So waking up to your higher self means your mind is expanding becoming more fluid, which means you'll likely be having more intense and meaningful dreams. And dreams that can directly apply to your life in some way to kind of help you along. I wish I could remember my dreams. Dang. Okay. Next one. You may have trouble sleeping or getting to sleep. Oh, Lord. Yes, I guess I am connecting very well. A downside to spiritual awakening is the difficulty in getting regular sleep. The higher frequencies may make it hard to get some shut-eye as your mind becomes more active and your DNA continues to upgrade. Who knew? I had no idea. Damn, I've been going through a spiritual awakening for years then. I didn't even know it. It says trust the process. It's in your highest good always. Okay, you start to pay more attention to how you talk to yourself. Yeah, when you start to realize that you would never say things to other people that you say to yourself and you start catching it and rephrasing or taking it back, you're connecting to your higher self. Now, aren't you feeling better? This list made me feel better. You have the desire to spend more time alone. Let's see what they say about that. As your higher self continues to shine through you more, you realize that a lot of the world just doesn't resonate with you anymore. So you're appreciating your own company more than you're appreciating the company of other people in your life. You're just not, yeah, not messing anymore. You start to feel more love and compassion than ever before. And this is because you're letting go of fear-based emotions and harmful ways of thinking. This is beautiful. Your higher self has reminded you that the world truly is magical and inspirational. But you know, the trick is that you have to believe that yourself, your higher self, can be showing you all sorts of magic and you're not seeing it if you're in that negative mindset. And the last one is, you begin to see your life manifest just how you had dreamed it would. Your dreams are unfolding right before your eyes and the world truly does feel magical. You no longer listen to those voices in your head that tell you you're small and insignificant because you have experienced too many miracles and strange circumstances to believe in boundaries and rules. 
you realize that you create your own reality so through your thoughts intentions and energy you construct your life as you see fit not alone though with the help of your higher self is this not cool you guys I would love to hear if after hearing these 11 things you realize that you're way more connected with your higher self than you originally thought because that's what hit me and it was like after that last brutal chart thank you universe <laughs> all right that's all for now but do tell me if this made you feel better sometimes I think I just get jollies out of the weirdest stuff and I'm the only one but you know Maybe I'm not. Take care. Bye.